next keynote speaker, we are pleased to welcome Ed McLaughlin, Chief Emerging Payments Officer at MasterCard Worldwide. Good morning. And it's so absolutely exciting to be back at Money 2020. And I think it's incredible if you just think for a moment about how much has happened since the last time we were together and how much more is yet to happen. But I think all of the conversation, all of the demonstrations, all of the innovations are bringing home what may be the most important point for all of us. That for the consumer, it's not about any of this. It's about all of this. So at MasterCard, we've always said it's never been about E versus M, or browser versus app, or NFC versus cloud, but how all of these things work together. How we can take maximum advantage of the capabilities of each of these new devices that consumers are adopting. How can we leverage the unprecedented connectivity that we now have between people and across these devices with one sole focus. How do we deliver better shopping experiences, more compelling for consumers, and more lucrative for merchants? But one other point. We've also always believed that this is not a zero-sum game in payments, but rather it's a tremendous opportunity to create new value for everyone involved. So I'd really like to focus on three things today as we talk about it. First, our view on the digital transition and the opportunity it has. And one point I'd like you to think about. We live in a world today, as hard as imagine in this room and in these hallways, we live in a world today where over 85% of transactions are still cash and check. If you're from the US, you live in a country where over half transactions are still cash and check. So there's great opportunity to generate new value, to bring electronic payments to more places. And I firmly believe in this vision of moving to a world beyond cash, a big part of it is also enabling this world beyond plastic. So second, what I would like to do is just show you some of the better shopping experiences that we have available today, talk about how it ties together, and some of the things we see happening going forward. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, I'd like to talk about how we can work together so we can do what consumers truly want, which is to have all of this work together. So to begin, I would like to just take a step back for a moment and really start with something we all know. Start with the reason why we're all here. Is we are going through an unprecedented lane change in consumers' lives. You've seen it in your own life. You've certainly seen it in your children's lives. And what's happening is the lines between the physical and digital are being obliterated. Consumer behavior, consumer interaction is moving more and more to intelligent, connected devices. It's already changed how we entertain ourselves. It changed how we educate ourselves. Uh, one example I was just thinking about this morning. For my daughter, she used to call me. Then she sent emails. Then she was a ferocious texter. Now I just get Snapchats, which if you're not familiar with that, is little flickering pictures. It, it's highly interpretive and quite obscure at times, but it lets me know what's going on. But think about that four major generations in how she interacts, and she's 15 years old. So the other thing we have to remember is these transformations in how people interact will continue to change. And the changes in how we interact with our family, with our community, with merchants, will also fundamentally change how consumers transact. Now we all know, perhaps trite to stay, one of the big drivers of this change is the smartphone. But MasterCard's position has always been that that is a device, not the device. 
When you got your first smartphone, you probably didn't throw out your PC. You probably bought a tablet a few years later. Your smart TV, your game system, your appliances, your thermostat, your car, all are going to become connected devices. And as everything becomes connected, people and merchants will use these devices to make and receive payments. It all gets back to commerce. This is what people do. So it's not about any device. It's about the fact that every device will be a, will be a commerce device. And what, what consumers want is all of this to work together. So let me stop there, because I want to get to the point again. It's not simply about the device. It's not simply about the device's capabilities. It's how we use it. It's what consumers really want. And what do consumers really want? Well, first and foremost, and a mistake that's been repeated across generations of technology, consumers don't want to simply recreate exactly what they could do before in a slightly more complex and expensive environment. What consumers want are what are those things that I could never do before? What are the new experiences? What's better? And at MasterCard, we always have to remember, as humbling as it is for us, and I'm sure many others in this room, nobody wants to do a transaction. Nobody wants a wallet. Merchants don't want to accept payment. They want to sell. Everyone is trying to do something else. And they will adopt and use and flock to those technologies that make that something else that much richer, that much more rewarding. And another key point, talk to consumers. Think of your own life. They also don't want to lose any of the convenience, the security, the rewards, the capabilities they get today with a genuine MasterCard transaction. No payment is more accepted, no electronic payment is more accepted globally than MasterCard. That's an incredible foundation of consumer convenience that they can build on. But what they tell us is what are they looking for? They're looking for shortcuts. They're looking for new ways to make things go faster, new ways to make their lives easier. Someone described it as they want the cheat codes for their life. And could you please give that to me? So what are these digital shortcuts? Well, a digital infrastructure can enable all of them. And let me start with contactless, tap and go. We have seen already in markets around the world, once consumers tap two or three times, they never go back to their prior behavior. And why? Because it's faster. Because it's more convenient for them. It's the fastest way through the queue, fastest way through the turnstile. And adoption of this has been surging. We've had 139% growth in pay pass locations year over year. And merchants are telling us it's improving their business. Kohl's, which is one of the largest retailers in Australia, told us that today, as my daughter likes to say, today to day, 60% of their transactions are contactless. Why? Because it's a better experience for their consumers. But that doesn't mean it's only about speeding people through the queue. In many situations, the best shopping experience is to avoid the queue entirely. So that's why MasterPass, our digital acceptance mark, supports in-app paying. It supports in-aisle paying. It supports the ability to order ahead at my favorite restaurant. So I don't have to queue. It's done when I get there. And remember, the vast majority, for everything we've achieved so far, the vast majority of digital payments are still online payments today through the browser except browsers are plural. I now have screens ranging from 84 inches to two and a half that I may want to use and interact with. So better ways to stream the credential, credentials, a one touch, a one tap checkout, adds real value for consumers. And then the last point, when we talk about designing MasterPass, designing digital MasterCard, one of the things that we've always said is we need to be ready for the as of yet unimagined edge device. So we can take full advantage of that 
to deliver those better shopper experiences, better shopping experiences. But let me make this real. Let's start right here in Las Vegas. I can walk out of this hotel, go down to the strip, and take the Centennial Line. And rather than having to find and fumble for $5 in exact change, I can simply tap any PayPass-enabled device, whether it's a watch, a card, a phone. And this is just one example. Major transit authorities like Transit for London, one of the largest and most sophisticated in the world, is now open for PayPass transactions. Here in the US, with the CTA, the Chicago Transit Authority, we recently opened that up for PayPass transactions. And everyone here is in the consumer adoption business. In the first few weeks, we had over 10 million taps. And the reason why, because it was faster, because it was better. When you have 280 milliseconds, when you need absolute reliability, that is where contactless can really shine. But let's bring it forward. I'm on transit because I want to go somewhere. And for fashion, for electronics, for other experiential things, I'm going to want to see it. I'm going to want to touch it. I need more than the reviews. So I can go to the store and find that big screen TV that I really want. But in doing so, my mobile, if we could switch over, becomes the shopping companion. So I can get more information online. I can tap a smart tag to see more about it. What I will want to see, perhaps from Citibank, is what is my financial information before I make this significant purchase? What's the open to buy on my credit line? How do I integrate the um, payment information back with what we have before? So when I decide to make that payment for the merchant, you get to that moment of truth where how can I close that deal right in aisle, right in store. So suddenly we can bridge the in aisle to their online presence and allow me to buy with this. And in checking out, I can simply use MasterPass to access my credentials and say, yes, I want to buy it. But here's a very important thing. Remember, I took transit there. I'm not going to carry a 60-inch big screen TV home on the bus. So I can use the same shipping information, safely and securely stored, most likely with my financial institution, that I could use to buy from a PC at work, a tablet on my sofa, right in aisle to buy that. And all of this is available today. But I'd also like to show you something that's even more intriguing, that's even more interesting. Working with ING Bank, we demonstrated last year the ability to create an EMV-like security on that online transaction directly from the aisle in the store. And the reason is simple. If I can tap that secure transaction two to four centimeters, there's no reason why I can't push it through an app or blow it through a browser. So as a merchant, I can now be present not only at my till, not only in my aisle, but anywhere. And I can reach my consumer and get safer and more secure transactions. Which gets back to our primary theme. How do we make this more convenient and more secure? I'd also like to touch on another thing that we announced today. And this was announced at the Retail World Congress in Paris with Condé Nast, which is an incredible new shopping experience where we can move beyond the store, beyond the app, beyond the browser, and allow you to buy right from content. Now, we were launching this in the November issue of Wired Magazine. It's a new application called Shop This. If you get a chance to look at the New York Times today, they included an article on what they called Shopping Nirvana. Now, since I can't show you next month's Wired yet, they wouldn't let me. Let me show you a, a surprisingly similar but entirely theoretical magazine. But I could be looking at it, reading my content on headphones, and say, that's the one I want. With just a touch on the shop click icon, I can use my MasterPass credentials. I can use all that storing and shipping information that I use to buy my big screen TV. And that's it. And I've bought it. And now I'm back into my content, reading about what may be my next device, that next device that I would want to use for commerce. So I want to make sure that we make the point. It's never been about just the PCs, smartphones, 
or even tablets. So one example, and um, Jimmy, if we could switch back. So one example we did with MasterCard Labs earlier this year is we demonstrated an integration of MasterPass with Google Glass. Because the next time I go buy that major electronic, I may have an entirely different shopping experience that's better than the one that I had before. Now again, please keep in mind, this was just a proof of technology. But I think what it does is truly proves the point that the interface doesn't define the transaction. The device doesn't create the payment systems. It's the payment system. It's MasterCard. It's the financial institutions. It's all of our partners that make these devices more useful, more interesting, more compelling for consumers, more lucrative for merchants. And that brings me back to really my fundamental point. In order to make all of this work together, we need to work together. And just one quick example, because sometimes we take so much for granted. Isn't it amazing that you can get on a plane, land anywhere in the world, and know that your MasterCard is going to work? This type of interoperability speeds innovation. It helps better consumer experiences get out there. No one would have been successful if we all tried to have our own proprietary mag stripe if merchants had to do 17 different things. So that's why last week, working with our financial institution customers, we also had an announcement with Visa and American Express on how we can set certain industry standards to help accelerate this transition from the physical to the digital. And the one thing that's great about this is standards are inherently inclusive. These are things that are open to all. But there's really four elements that we wanted to look at, four questions that kept coming up. First, as we store credentials in more and more places, as we want to include security keys and cryptology and enable things like in-store and online payments in a more secure manner, how are those credentials handled? What's stored? We know we don't want it to be the base card information. So a token, a virtual representation of that card, makes the most sense. But every device manufacturer, every container needs to know what to expect and how to handle that. So it's a perfect example for an industry standard. Because we also all know the way to make information truly safe is to make it useless if it's used outside of context. Secondly, as we move from plastic to digital, there's more information we can move through the networks to make the devices work better, to allow issuers to make more informed decisions as they serve their customers. Third is we enable these digital devices, having a consistent way to identify and verify the user. Just like anywhere in the world, when you walk up to an ATM, you pretty much know how to do it. How can we do that in the digital realm? And then the last point is the interface types. Just as no one would have benefited from a proprietary mag stripe, we believe that if in the plastic world, you had swipe, you had type, you had dip, as we move to the digital world, having standards around that tap, having standards around how a transaction can be displayed, having standards around, around how they can be streamed, will simply benefit merchants and ease adoption and implementation of digital payments. At MasterCard, we're fully committed to using these standards to help us develop our services. We've always seen MasterCard as a platform for our partners to build great businesses on top of. And as we're moving from providing a network and a platform for plastic payments to enabling an operating system for digital commerce. And you'll see that through our services, whether it's the MasterPass digital acceptance mark, our on behalf wallet services, better credential management and tokenization services, or our open API to allow partners to access MasterCard information, security, technology, so they can help tailor and deliver those next generations of shopping experiences. But the final point is all of our digital services are designed around basic principles from MasterCard, guiding principles that one, we believe our role is to enhance, not to interfere with the relationships our customers have with their customers. We want to make sure that we're preserving the investments in existing systems and also providing 
for easy adoption of new technologies. So let me end really at the beginning. Why I think all of this is so important. It's because what consumers want, and if you think about it, what you really want is for all of this to work together. And to do so, we want to work together. We want MasterCard to be your partner of choice, to build your businesses, to deliver these better shopping experiences, and to work with us to help enable this world beyond plastic. So with that, thank you for your time, and I look forward to working together. Thank you.